Hey everybody, welcome back to my watch and jewelry bench and today we're going to cover something different other than watches and jewelry. We're going to cover Blender 3.0 and specifically we're going to be talking about booleans. I want to talk to you today about how booleans can help you with modeling and how to use both destructive and non-destructive booleans. In the past versions of Blender, booleans have gotten a bad reputation, but I think over the, the last few versions from 2.9 and on, it has gotten much better and much more easy to use. Don't forget when you open up Blender, you're gonna get introduced by the splash screen. Just click off of that. We got our cube right down here. I'm gonna zoom into that cube. Guys, if you haven't been watching any of my videos, I've done some, uh, in the previous couple of videos, I've been doing some Blender 3.0 tips and tricks, how to set up working in millimeters, uh, setting up things and getting used to where things are in Blender. So go back and watch that playlist because you'll find it very useful if you're just getting started with Blender. Now let's talk about the Boolean tool. Okay, so I've got Vanilla Blender, and if you've been following along, we're working with Blender basically the way it comes. I've got this currently from the last video. I did some, some uh, modifications to the settings so that we're working in millimeters for those of us who like to do 3D printing. Again, you can go watch those videos in the playlist. We're going to come over here to the Edit menu. We're going to go over to Preferences, and that'll bring up the Preference window. What we want to do now is activate the Boolean tool that is built into Blender. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select Boolean. I'm going to type in Bool and you can see it brings up a tool called Bool Tool. So we can hit this little arrow, it'll bring up some more information. We have access to the documentation. We can report errors if we'd like. To activate the Bool Tool, we're going to put a little check mark here. When I do that, it'll open up this little section here and it gives us the option of putting it in one of the existing tabs, which is the edit menu, or we can put it in its own tab. I'm gonna put it in its own tab for now, but you can put it wherever you like. So I'm gonna call this Bool Tool. Now you can see it created a new tab on our end panel called Bool Tool. I'm gonna to close this up and now we've got Boolean activated. With that activated, I can actually start using Booleans. Now what are Booleans? Booleans are modifiers in Blender where we can select two or more objects and either combine them, remove them from each other, leave differences in models, and I'm gonna show you quickly basically what they do. So I'm gonna start with the obligatory cube. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate that, shift D, enter, and make a copy of it. I'm gonna move this cube over here, and I'm gonna bring it up and over. So here you can see we have our Boolean, or we have our two cubes, and they're kind of overlapping each other, but not necessarily uh, perpendicular or parallel to each other, they're kind of offset. Now with a Boolean tool, I'm going to select this Boolean tab here in our end panels, and if you don't have the end panels, you can press the N key on your keyboard and the end panels will come and go. Sometimes you may want to hide them if you don't need them, and sometimes you may want them there. So with those tools selected, I'm going to hit this little arrow here, and now let's take a look at the six options. This, let's take a look at the six options that we have for the Bool tool. We have Auto Boolean, which is Difference, Union, Intersect, and Slice. Uh, these are the four destructive Boolean tools. And then we have non-destructive tools here, which adds a non-destructive modifier um, for the same thing, Difference, Union, Intersect, and Slice. So how do I use these? So for if I want to basically take this block and remove where it contacts this block, from the second block, or let's call this block number one, we'll call this block number two. If I wanna take whatever part of block number two is contacting block number one away from block number one, here's how I would do it. First, I select my uh, cube two, which is gonna be the one I use as a cutout. I'm gonna hold the shift key down and I'm gonna select the cube that I want to keep, which is the cube number one, and with that selected last, you can see that the cutout cube or cube number two is highlighted in red. The cube that will stay in place after we're done with the Boolean option is orange. So I've got those two selected and I'm gonna come over to difference and you'll see what it does is it cuts out that cube from our first cube. So now I'm left with a cube with a huge cutout in it. I'm gonna control Z that and Let's just go into wireframe mode so we can get a better idea of these two cubes. Now, if you look at both cubes, they're still selected. 
um, you can see the intersecting area that's highlighted, or it's not really highlighted, but it's, you can see the intersecting area between the two cubes. Now let's say that I want to combine these two cubes into basically a clean mesh. I can come over to the union tool. And if I do that, and you watch closely what happens to the uh, lines of our mesh, you'll see now that our cubes are combined into one object, and they are nicely modeled together. If I just select all, let's go back into object mode, let's turn off wireframe. And now if you look at our cubes, it's basically one option or one object that is perfectly meshed together. Let's control Z that and let's go back to our two cubes. And what happens if what I want is actually the intersection of those two cubes, if I go back into uh, X-ray mode, if I want to just get the intersection of these two cubes, I can press the intersect button. When I click that, watch what happens. It leaves me with the portion where the two cubes overlapped each other. So that gives me the results of what basically is a combined mesh of the two, but removes the rest of it. Let's control Z out of there. And if we hit slice, you can see what it does now. If I turn off X-ray mode, it gives us a sliced section of our model. And then I can do whatever I want with that. Pretty slick. And for instance, if you're doing some 3D modeling, um, I can come over here, go into edit mode, hit uh, two for edge select, control B, and then I can add in a kind of a bevel to this. If I go back into object mode now, you can see I get this really cool cutout effect from my model by using the Boolean tool. I'm gonna control Z back out of that and go back to our original two cubes. With our two cubes here, I'm gonna again select this one, hold the shift key down and select the first cube. Now we can go over and talk about non-destructive Booleans. So here we have difference. If I click the non-destructive difference, watch what happens. It makes this outlined cube right here from our original cube. Let's go over and take a look at the modifier tool. It also added a modifier to our existing first cube. So if I select this first cube, you can see it has a difference option for the Boolean selected uh, operation is object and it's using cube number two to cut out from cube number one. Now, the really nice thing about a non-destructive Boolean is that if I take this model, again, watch what happens closely. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. So if we zoom in just a little bit more, if I grab the arrow for our gizmo and I move it in, you can see it continues to cut into our model. Using the non-destructive Boolean gives you a little bit more control over exactly how you want your model to look. I can take this particular cube, which is now our cutout, and I could size it down. I can make it longer along the X axis by using the S key and the X. I could size it along Z, or I can do some pretty slick thing. If I want to add a bezel, control B and then move out. Let's control B and add in a bevel. If I add in a bevel edge, Hit the tab key, you can see what it does. It gives us this cool little curved shape within our model. I can again move that anywhere I want it. I could size it up, S, SZ, and then move it upright, move it in, and I can get myself some really cool looking cutouts for modeling. Then when I want to apply this particular Boolean to this particular shape, I can come over and hit the apply button. So I'll come over here to where it says modifiers. We come down to our Boolean modifier and I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Here you can see it's a non-destructive difference. And I can hit this little down arrow right here, hit apply. And now if I get rid of this cube, the cutout cube, it makes our whole model permanently cut out. Let's grab these two cubes again. Let's come over to our non-destructive union and let's try working with that. Now basically what this is doing, and I'm gonna go into wireframe mode, is if you look at our model and I move this in, let's grab this particular one here, I can move my non-destructive non union, and you can see these white lines are going to be the newly created lines that it's going to create. Again, this is not, it's not permanent because I can go back and change this and make this anywhere I want it to be and then apply the modifier, just like we did with the other one, by clicking on the first cube, 
And if I apply this, it will make this union permanent, similar to what we did here. But when we did the destructive union, unfortunately, the only way back is to um, hit the Control Z or Command Z buttons on your keyboard. With the non-destructive, I can still come back and modify this particular cube as much as I want. Basically size it down, leave it in a corner like that. And then when I hit the modifier by selecting the first cube, coming over to the modifier, hit apply. Now we have one piece that has the Boolean union added to it and it's permanent. Okay, I'm gonna control Z back out. Similar to the intersect and slice of our destructive Boolean tools, we have those same in non-destructive format. Okay, so I've showed you both the destructive and the non-destructive. We're gonna go through this one more time and I'm gonna show you just a little bit more of a convenient tip or trick here. If I select this to be my cutout and I hold the shift key down on my first cube and I hit non-destructive difference, you can see it gives us this, this red outline box, which is now our cutout. And remember, I showed you that you could select that box, you can move it in and out, you can adjust it, make anything you want out of it, and it'll basically cut out on the fly. If you want to apply that without going to the modifiers tab, if you really, really like the way it looks, you can come over here to apply brush and then remove all. Um, you can select this, press X, and you can see basically hitting the apply brush, did the same thing as going to the modifiers tab and hitting the apply. Please make sure you go and play with the Boolean tool because I think you're gonna really find it enjoyable. It gives you a good way to add objects to and from each other, and you can do it with just about any object that you have. I will just go ahead and add in a cylinder here, and then we're going to go in and add a UV sphere, and I'm going to drive that over here, make that a little bit smaller. And if I come over and move this in, if we look at our two models, I could basically just select these two, do a union, oops, do a union, and now those two objects are joined as one complete model. And if we look at this under X-ray, you can see it removed all the arbitrary vertices and geometry that we no longer need. That's the purpose of a Boolean. It helps you to add and subtract objects from uh, other models. And of course, if you've been watching any of my jewelry design videos, you'll notice that I use Booleans a lot to uh, especially work with the holes for the diamonds. Uh, to make the cutouts as well as adding the prongs and sometimes you'll make a ring out of maybe 20 different pieces of jewelry and then you'll want to combine them so that's one way to do it and that's with the boolean tools go and play with those get used to them because they're fun to use they're fun to work with they do get a bad reputation in blender but uh, that's because older versions of blender used to kind of be a little bit wanky and you got poor geometry with your uh, models. And one more thing to keep in mind when you're working with the Boolean tools is that if you're working with adding and subtracting models from each other using the Boolean options, you have to be conscious of the position of the normals on your model. They should all be, pa they should all be facing outward. So you should always double check the normals on a model before you actually go and apply the Boolean tool. You also will find there are occasions where the Boolean tool does not work well. And there is another Boolean add-on that I'll cover later in this course that you can get to uh, kind of compensate for some of the built-in Boolean misfunctions. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. If you haven't watched any other of my videos on Blender 3.0, make sure you hit the playlist and check those out. Have a great day and happy blundering.